Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial and in this video I'm going to be showing you lots of tips and techniques for photographing butterflies. So where are we going to find our butterflies? That's the first question. And really I'd just keep it simple. If uh, through the late, from late spring through the summer, if you just search out those areas of wildflowers, that's where you're going to find your butterflies feeding. And if you've got mixed habitat like I have here, as well as the wildflowers, it's really quite a lot of open grassland mixed with trees and hedgerows. All those habitats are going to give you different species of butterfly. With some species of butterfly, you will actually need to find a specific flower that they tend to feed on. However, what I found is a lot of butterflies do seem to be drawn to purple flowers. Uh, particularly here, there's lots of thistle and knapweed and field scabious. So if you found anywhere where there's purple flowers, I think you'll have a good chance of getting your butterflies. What lens do you need for butterfly photography? Well, I would definitely recommend uh, a macro lens if you can. For example, you could get a 60 millimeter macro lens or something like this, which is a 100 millimeter macro lens. Uh, with both these, you do actually need to get fairly close to the subject. That was the only downside, I would say. Uh, another example would be something like 150 or 180 millimeter macro lens. These, I think, are absolutely ideal because with the longer focal length, it's going to soften the backgrounds much easier and it also means that you have a greater working distance you don't have to get quite quite as close to the butterfly if you're using those lenses Another option, uh, particularly if you're on a budget, you don't have a macro lens, is actually to use a shorter lens and add an extension tube onto it. So something even like a standard 50mm lens, you simply add an extension tube between the camera and the lens. And what that allows you to do is then to focus closer. So it's just basically like a, a cheaper alternative than going out and buying a macro lens. Another option is to use a relatively short telephoto lens. So maybe something like a 200 millimeter, 300 millimeter. And in that situation, what you want is to have a lens that's got a good minimum focusing distance that allows you to get close enough to get the butterfly filling in a large portion of the frame. If you're using Canon, then the 100 millimeter to 400 millimeter zoom lens can be really good for butterfly photography. And that's largely because it has a very good minimum focusing distance, which allows you to get very close to the subject Object. also you're going to get those really nice soft backgrounds um, also if you're using a telephoto lens 200 300 400 you could try adding an extension tube that's going to allow you to focus even closer So let's talk about lighting conditions and weather. Uh, what you want to have ideally is nice dry days, preferably with very low winds. And what I'd say is try not to photograph in the middle of the day in bright sun. It's less flattering, but more importantly, the, the butterflies are going to be so active, you're going to find it very difficult to actually get close enough in the first place. So if you can, try and photograph early in the morning or late afternoon, evening, the butterflies are going to be less active, they're going to slow you down, and also the light is going to be more flattering. A day like today is perfect, so if you can try those days where it's overcast but still relatively warm, you might find the butterflies are a little less active and again, easier to photograph. Exposure settings, uh, for the shutter speed I would say when you're hand holding you want to probably be up at about 250th of a second. If you're on a tripod then really you can let the shutter speed go as slow as you want uh, depending how much wind there is, how much su subject movement that you've got. With the aperture I'd say aim to shoot around a, a mid-range aperture. So typically I'll shoot butterflies from f5.6 to f8. Sometimes I'll go outside of that depending on the situation and depending on the effects that I'm after. I think the most important thing is your approach. So try and approach the butterfly uh, with a camera as parallel as you can. And if you do that, then a mid-range aperture should give you good depth of field and a reasonably soft background as well. A few tips on actually approaching the butterfly and getting your pictures. Do bear in mind that they are sensitive to, to movement and vibration. So you wanna try and move just as quietly and as slowly as you possibly can to avoid disturbing it. And 
if it is a pretty warm day and the butterfly is active, then you're almost certainly going to be hand holding. So I've got a technique that I find works well for me. Uh, if I find a butterfly feeding on top of a flower and I'm going to go for it, I put one leg forward as close as I can get without disturbing the butterfly. I put all my weight on that leg and then I just slowly move in, so acting a bit like a pivot, I slowly move in and go closer and closer and closer. And that's a really good way of doing it because it's smoother, you're not moving your body around as much. I find it's a really good technique. Um, and then when you've done that, just move away in the same fashion. There's really two angles that you're gonna photograph your butterfly from, and that's either you're gonna be above it where the wings open, or you're gonna be from the side where the butterfly has got its wings closed. So depending on the situation, it's gonna depend on the angle. So if you're, uh, if you're photographing the butterfly feeding on the flower, then you wanna try and get above it, try and get above it as much as possible to get the camera as parallel as you can to, the, to those wings. And you might have to wait a bit whilst the butterfly opens and closes its wings. Every time it opens, then you fire off a small sequence of shots. When it's very warm, butterflies will be flying around from flower to flower. It can be very difficult to follow them and to get the pictures before they're off onto the next flower. So my advice is just look for the patch of flowers where the butterflies are hanging around and just stay near a few flowers or maybe even pick one specific flower on its own and literally just wait there by the flower, wait for the butterfly to come to you. Um, alternatively, you might find one resting maybe on the stem of a plant. In that case, again, you want to get down as parallel as you can with the back of the camera to the butterfly. And a good example of this is if you find a butterfly that's actually roosting early in the morning, it's not going to be going anywhere. You're going to be shooting from the side. In this case, you might be able to use a tripod. You can get the tripod in there, get everything set up, take your time. And again, just make sure that you get the back of the camera as parallel to those wings as you can. So with our butterflies, what's the best way to focus? What I'd say is if the butterflies are more active, moving around, then I would use a tracking autofocus like Servo on Canon. Just use that and you should be okay. Um, if the butterfly is much slower, and it's a technique that I prefer, then I would use manual focus. Uh, but rather than just keep moving the focus ring, I actually use the technique of kind of rocking slightly backwards and forwards. So I'll, I'll get the focus roughly where I want it, for the size of the butterfly in the frame. And then I'll just, I'll just slightly rock forwards and back, firing a sequence of shots. And by doing that, that's a really good way of focusing. I actually think it's easier doing it that way. And if you are lucky enough to find a butterfly roosting, say early in the morning, and you can get the tripod in there, then I would actually use live view to focus. So what I'll do is switch it onto live view, and then I'll actually zoom in. Personally, I'll just zoom in to times five, and then I just use the manual focus to tweak it by looking on the screen on the back of the camera. And that's a really good way of getting very, very accurate focus on anything macro. And my other tip just to maximize the depth of field is not to take too frame filling a shot. So the closer you get, the less the depth of field becomes. It's very difficult to get more sharpness throughout the butterfly's body and the wings. So consider actually just coming back maybe a couple of inches and you'll find that you get more depth of field. And then if you want, you could actually crop that later to make it more frame filling. All your butterfly pictures do not need to be frame filling. Maybe step back, show more of the environment. I'm a big fan of those images that show more of the habitat in which the butterfly lives. And the benefit as well is if you come further back, depth of field becomes less of an issue. It's much easier. Uh, so that means you can use a wider aperture, which in turn means you can keep the ISO down for better quality. And it means you can use a faster shutter speed, which is great if you're hand holding. I like to keep everything nice and simple for butterfly photography, but I do have a few accessories that I like to use. So the first one is really simple, which is just a reflector, which will just bounce a little bit of light back when needed. Uh, and then next is this little LED, which I've just started using occasionally. And I don't like to use flash for macro photography, um, but where the reflection isn't enough to give you that extra bit of light, then something like this can work really, really well. You just need to make sure that you adjust it so you don't make it too powerful. And I do also have another of other little accessories. I'll put a link up here to those, uh, including things like pegs, 
and scissors and a plant which are really useful for insect and macro photography uh, but for those generally you need to be working on a subject that is staying in one place ideally you've got the tripod set up and then you can use those appropriately if you want to see more videos on photographing insects then do click the playlist up here if you want to see one of my bird photography tutorials then click this playlist here uh, please subscribe as well and thanks for watching i'll see you somewhere in nature sometime soon